This was the scene last Monday when WCU students returned from break. But what a difference a week makes. WCU ground crews planted flowers this Monday and the trees began to bloom. Signs of spring are fully evident in Westchester. Hello, Westchester University. I'm Matt Dole. And I'm Justin Sachoka. Thanks for tuning in this week. We apologize for not having an episode last week. But that freak snowstorm shut us down in our studios that we film in. We're closed for right. the evening, so we had a week off. But... Now we're back. We have a huge show, tons of guests here for you, and a lot of events as well. Absolutely. We're glad to be back. And we're going to start things off with a huge campus-wide event that's going to happen this Saturday, April 7th, from 12 until 4 p.m. in the Hollinger Fieldhouse. Aid to South Africa raises awareness and money for victims and orphans of HIV AIDS. There will be food, games, live performances, a walking relay, and a soccer tournament. Now, last year, this organization helped raise over $14,000, and you can help make this year an even bigger success. So head to that event. Yeah, it's a great event that happens right. every single year and then coming up on April 2nd you can stop by the Sykes ballrooms to donate blood to the American Red Cross. They will be stationed at Sykes from 11 until 4 for you to donate. The only thing you have to lose is blood. That's disgusting. And hey, the graduate social work students will be holding a bake sale in the student union from 10 until 4, but this isn't your everyday bake sale. It's a soul food bake sale. Now, all the proceeds will benefit the Chester County Food Bank, and they will also be collecting non-perishable food items at the sale as well. So bring something by if you don't want to buy something. That, as soon as you said that, Brendan, our director of photography, perked up. He's going to be there. He loves soul food. Yeah, I, I, I'll be there as well. I'll be, I go to all these bake sales. Well, this week, the Ram statue, actually this month the Ram yep. statue, will be a different color and to explain why Alicia and Kaylee from Alpha Z Delta are here to explain what is going on with that. Come Welcome, on, how are you? Hi. Nice Hi. to see you. Now you're wearing blue shirts and I hear the Ram is going to be a little blue as well. Why? Um, well, April is Autism Awareness Month okay. and August or April 2nd is Autism Awareness Day. But for one week we really would like to light the Ram up blue because part of Aut Autism Awareness Month is lighted up blue. Okay. So okay. we chose the Ram statue because it's what everybody sees, you know, when they come to sure. Westchester. Absolutely. And um, we decide we have our philanthropy, um, Autism Speaks, because one in 88 children are affected by autism, and that number keeps growing. Wow. So we really like to raise awareness and raise money for a great cause. Excellent. Now, there's a lot of events that are happening, not only um, this week, but all month yep. long. So you want to explain a little bit about that? Right. April 2nd is National Autism Awareness Day. So in the quad, we're going to be passing out free Kool-Aid if you're wearing blue, so stop by the quad to get some free Kool-Aid. So you need to wear blue on April 2nd. Cool. That's what you have right. to make sure you do. Yep. You so I would, I would get some You would be fine. Yeah. Right? I'll yeah. wear the shirt again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then on the 13th, do you have another event? April quad? 13th, we're having a tailgate in the quad. That sounds awesome. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a bunch of food and games, like cornhole, ladder ball, and it's going to be lots of fun. And so that is all donation-based. You don't have to pay to, to, to take Right, that. all donation-based, yeah. And, and then there was one more event uh, on my birthday. Guess what, <laughs> what are you doing on my birthday? <laughs> on your birthday, April 22nd, we will be selling Rita's in the quad. Awesome. I can't it, wait. I'm going to stop. I by. love the, how he puts the shameless plugs for his birthday and everything. Now, <laughs> so if you're, around. You, you're, you're one of 85, or you're two of 85 girls. Do you think 85 girls can sing happy birthday to him at that event? That's what he would really love. We can make it happen. We're, yes. we're definitely okay. going to try. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I would love That's that. what you're, we're looking forward to. So if you, if you don't want to come out to the event for right. anything else, but, I mean, you sing happy birthday to him. Um, very impressive. You have how many girls in your sorority? 85. About 85. About 85. Uh, yeah. So they raised over five thousand dollars last year. So we would love to, to see money. you guys yeah. top that this year. So uh, we're going to post all their events uh, on our Facebook page. So stop on by. There's plenty of events you can go to. So try to give a little something. Uh, great calls. Autism speaks. For sure. Wear blue, right? And wear your blue. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks so much for yeah. coming out and joining us today and tell us about the event. All right. Good Thank luck. You. All right. Thanks. thanks. So we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. And uh, hey, do you remember Justin the, the game Guess Who? I do remember. I love that game. I, I love that game as well. Well, there's a really great event coming up, hosted by the Purple and Gold Club as well as the Golden Ram Society. Now they're hosting a gameathon for students, and it's going to be in Sykes Student Union, where the old uh, aerobics room used to be in the, on the ground level. Uh, it's going to be from seven to nine on Thursday, and students can come out and play a wide variety of games, including Guess Who, uh, Bananagrams, Clue, uh, Clue, Apples to Apples. That's I a good love. One. That's my favorite game. Then we're I love to Apples to Apples. Uh, and there's a ton more. Now you have the chance, not only are you going to play games with your friends, you have a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card. And if that wasn't enough, Justin, there's going to be free food for students to enjoy. It's all just $2 to get in the door. Uh, I'm going to go to that. That's, it's, I've yeah. never seen something like that on campus before. It's going to be cool. That sounds like it's going to be yeah. a lot of fun. Well, also happening that night, and actually there are two different times, so you mm -hmm. can go to both. This is in the Sykes um, Common Grounds. Alpha Mu Gamma will be hosting their very first open mic night in the Common Grounds. And it's going to happen from 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. 
you can bring your best song, your poem, or anything cultural that you can perform on a small stage. Refreshments are going to be available for attendees uh, that are there. And I believe there's also going to be a small prize for the winner as well, so you can go check that out. And this past week, Westchester University crowned the new Mr. WCU. A total of 18 guys competed against one another for the title. And Mike the Prince, a senior this year, well, he won it all. Westchester University 2013! Mike the Prince! Westchester University is known for a lot of really great things, and one of which is its outstanding athletic teams. Now, Justin, while well, you're not athletic, uh, you will be working with some athletes, athletes this Wednesday night, right? Well, first of all, what makes you say I'm not athletic? Uh, well, remember that basketball thing we did a couple weeks back? So that's right, Matt. I will be joining um, <laughs> at the, the well, I'll be joining SAC this week um, for their Athletes Got Talent competition. I'm actually going to be emceeing that. Uh, it's happening this Wednesday night at Hollinger Fieldhouse, and the competition is going to be very interesting. All of these athletes who they get together and, and they perform. They're, mm -hmm. they're athletic and talented. Uh, there's just they're far more talented than I am. So if you want to check that out, you can come out to it on Wednesday night. starts at 7 p.m. And our very own Brian Fiocco actually is also going to be part of it. He's a judge in the competition. You're kidding me. I am not kidding you. Well, I can't wait to throw it over to him. That's, well, <laughs> we are throwing it over to him next. Brian, what's going on? Starting off with some exciting sports news, as you can see here, our field hockey team had their picture taken with Vice President Joe Biden as the back-to-back -back national chance were recognized at halftime of Delaware's NCAA tournament game versus North Carolina. Well, finally, the cold weather is over. Well, we hope so, and that means it's the spring sports season. Let's start off with Westchester's hottest team right now. The women's lacrosse team remains undefeated after defeating Millersville Saturday afternoon 18-8. Senior Jamie Dolan led the Rams to five goals, improving the record to a perfect 5-0. Up next, they traveled to East Stroudsburg Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. Moving on to the Diamond, both baseball and softball had their winning streaks broken this weekend. Softball split their series with cuts down on Friday, and on Saturday, the baseball team split their series with Mansfield. Softball is looking good with a 19-8 overall record, as next Holy Family travels here for a doubleheader on Tuesday. And in baseball, they now sit with a 16-9-1 overall record as they get ready for their Bill Giles tournament on April 10th here at Westchester. Let's finish up with some women's rugby as they competed in their Mason Dixon tournament this weekend. On Saturday, the semifinal match, Westchester defeated James Madison 29-22. And on Sunday, the Lady Rams faced off against the United States Naval Academy in the finals. Unfortunately, Westchester could not pull out the win as they were defeated 17-10. That's all we have for this week's Sport Short. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brian. Now, when you hear the words college and spring break, what well, you often hear, think of a maybe tropical destination, but a group of Westchester students, well, they decided to do really the complete opposite, and they chose to make a difference over their spring break. So we have six Westchester students with us right now. In fact, I guess I'll just go down the line and introduce all of them. Go for it. We have Fran. Hello, Fran. Uh, Melissa, Kelsey, Mark in the back, Olivia, and Joe. So you guys, you did not go to a tropical destination. You did not choose to, I don't know, go and party, uh, as some people do. I went to Puerto Rico, right. so <laughs> you guys already have a leg up on You that. did something <laughs> fantastic. The, the campus is very proud of you. So, Fran, maybe uh, tell, tell us where you guys went over spring break. Sure. So um, our spring break was spent in Staten Island, Nor New, York, New York City. Uh, we went down with the Office of Service Learning and Volunteer Programs, and basically, uh, the end of last semester, we were planning this, and we were trying to find a place to stay and agencies to work with, and Melissa and I each uh, research an agency and then as soon as we got back in January applications were out um, flyers were out and we recruited an awesome team to oh. do some Sandy relief now I want to know why did you go why why was it that you chose this was what you wanted to do over your spring break uh, you know the time over spring break is to relax a little bit and from the pictures that I've seen and from what I've heard you did the work, opposite yeah. of <laughs> relaxing um, I actually this is my sixth service trip that I've been on and okay. um, I wanted to be able to finally plan a service trip after being on so many. So um, I've done Hurricane retreat, Katrina relief work before, so I thought that this was a perfect opportunity to help those closer to home um, mm -hmm. in New York. Now, there was 21 of you who went in all, right? Uh, we have all seen pictures on the news, uh, news of the devastation up there. Uh, Joe, were you surprised at anything? Was it worse than you thought? Or was the recovery process moving quicker than you thought? Um, we do have some pictures. So maybe explain what we're seeing here and, and you can answer that question. Oh, well, one of the days uh, with Guy on Rescue, which was one of the agencies that we worked with, they had, um, they were trying to figure out what they wanted us to do. They were trying to get the materials. So they asked us to go down into the neighborhood, I think it was Fox Beach Lane, and they asked us to pick up some trash. And as you can see here, it was that water right over there. That's where a home was. Wow. The foundation is completely gone. It's completely devastated. There's nothing there. So yes, because the, uh, the images 
Because what I, I guess I realized is that they talked about Hurricane Sandy for, on the news for about like two days, and then they just moved on with what was next on the news, which is fine. But then you got up there, and you, I didn't expect it to still be that bad. Mm. This area right here, the Hurricane Sandy was back in October, and we went in March, and it honestly looked like nothing had changed. It looked like the hurricane happened the day before. Um, and as we look at more pictures, tell us more about the two organizations that you guys chose to work with. So we worked with um, the Stephen Siller Tunnel Towers Foundation, uh, which was um, kind of brought it together after 9-11 um, from a firefighter who lost his life. And then the second um, organization was Guy and Rescue, which was started right after the storm. And with uh, Tunnel to Towers, we focused on one basement of a woman's house um, during that entire week, and we insulated and drywalled. And the second organization, we helped insulate a lot of houses in the area. That was um, where these boats are. And then um, we also helped to sort food in a food pantry. Now real quick, Kelsey, uh, before we go, because we're running out of time, what did, what did you get out of this trip? Um, I thought the trip was actually amazing. It was actually my first service trip um, that I've ever been on, and it was an amazing experience. Um, like Joe said, like I wasn't expecting that much devastation, and um, like all of us, 21 of us came together, um, not knowing each other at the beginning of the trip, came together and just like went all out, um, helped a bunch of people, and um, just did a great job. Olivia, would you ever go back again in March? Um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Well, we want to thank you very much for coming and sharing your stories. I know a lot of people have heard about you guys going on there. We've you know, you've had a lot of publicity about the trip itself, um, and you know, there's I'm sure you have stories you can go on for hours just telling all yeah. the different experiences. But you, you um, definitely made the campus proud. Uh, and if people want to get involved and do more stuff like you guys are doing, where can they look out around campus? Who can they contact? Um, Jody Roth is the director yeah. of Office of uh, Service Learning and Volunteer Program, so awesome. she's the person to definitely reach out to. And Great. then any of uh, Melissa and I are looking to find student leaders to plan a trip like this next year. Great. So. Right, great. Well, so student leaders definitely reach out yeah. to friend about that and Melissa about that. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm glad you enjoyed your spring break. Uh, you really, again, you made everybody proud. So until next week, uh, a lot more events coming. April's a busy, busy month for it's events. It's a really, yeah. really busy month. And uh, hey, we have tickets to see uh, Figgy Set. Oh boy. So uh, you're actually going to get up close and personal with yeah. him. More details on that are happening next week. So we'll see you then. Until next week, I'm Sol. And I'm Justin Sachoka. And on behalf of Brian Bianca, we hope you enjoy the rest of this week. We'll see you next.